good place to start when building your first tank is marinedepot.com. Just click on aquariums and you can browse their extensive selection of commercially available products from companies such as Innovative Marine, Waterbach, Red Sea, Core Life, Lifeguard, JBJ. Really with commercially available tanks, there are various sizes from a small five gallon nano tank all the way up to 200, 250 gallons. But for this beginner build, we're going with that innovative Marine Nubo Concept Encore build, which is a 20 gallon, a smaller tank. A medium sized tank is gonna be 30 gallons to like 100 gallons. And then a large category tank will really be anything over 100 gallons. Most of the commercially available tanks are made of glass, which means you're basically stuck with some sort of rectangular shape. So your basic tank shape options are like a standard rectangle, a cube, like a tall tank, you can get a short tank, one with slightly rounded edges, or even like a bow front tank. Tank shape is relatively important for the kind of livestock. For example, if you get like a shorter, wider tank, the light can penetrate better all the way to the bottom. But if you get a taller, deeper tank, you can utilize the entire water column for livestock. Hobbyists use all sorts of jargony terms to discuss the different styles of tank, starting with an all-in-one system. An all-in-one system basically comes with a tank, usually a rear filtration chamber, some of your filtration elements, and also a return pump. You're still probably gonna have to buy your lights and any sort of other tank gear you need. A peninsula style tank is exactly like it sounds. It's a long skinny rectangle shaped like a peninsula that has three large viewing sides. This tank really makes a great room divider as you can see it from all sides. A cube style tank is any tank where every dimension is the same, basically making it a perfect cube. A breeder style tank is typically a 40 gallon tank that's a little bit longer, almost a peninsula shape. We just use that term because it's a really handy tank if you're running any sort of breeding program for tropical fish. Drop-off tanks aren't really that common, but Innovative Marine does sell some. Basically, what they try to do is mimic the edge of a reef where it drops off into the abyss. So a drop-off tank typically has two levels, and then you can aquascape from one level to the other, giving this amazing sense of depth. Rimless style tanks are really all the rage right now. Basically, back in the olden days, you used to have to have a brace on the inside of the tank so that all the water pressure wouldn't break out and basically destroy your tank. A rimless tank has a top that's completely clean without a rim, giving it an almost infinite feel. A Euro brace tank is typically seen on larger tanks like my 120 gallon. Basically at the very top of the tank, in order to make sure the seams don't bust, you put a brace just on the inside, which gives the tank a bit more strength. A frag tank is really any sort of tank where the height is very low. Basically, hobbyists use it for frags of corals, and the reason it's low is so that you can have equal, strong light penetration to the very bottom. The last style of tank is called a lagoon tank, and these are becoming a lot more popular. Basically what they do is they try to recreate that brackish water environment that mangroves live in. So you actually plant mangroves in the tank, and you usually have to put the lights up quite a bit higher so that they can light the mangroves themselves. Saltwater aquariums are made out of one of two types of material. The first is glass. Glass is pretty heavy, but it's really easy to clean and it doesn't scratch very easily. Your standard aquarium that you pick up from a big box store has a lightly green hue to it, so they make what's called low iron glass. For example, the innovative marine Encore build that we're doing is low iron glass throughout. Low iron glass basically removes that green hue and ups the clarity. You might also hear this term starfire glass thrown around. Starfire is just a brand name for low iron glass. The second type of material is acrylic. Acrylic's awesome because it can be made in any shape. It's super lightweight and it has a really high clarity. It's even more clear than glass. Regarding filtration for saltwater aquariums, there's really three separate types. The first is a rear filtration chamber. Basically, you hide all of your filtration equipment, whether it's carbon, whether it's GFO, whether it's a sponge, in a separate compartment behind the display tank. 
our innovative marine Encore build has a rear filtration chamber. The second type of filtration is a sump. A sump is basically like a second mini aquarium that hides directly underneath your display tank. It's really handy because you can hide all of your gear, your filtration, your protein skimmer, your wires, everything can be hidden in that sump and it also increases the overall water volume which provides a certain level of stability with your water parameters. The third and probably most simple type of filtration is what we call an HOB or hang on the back. For example, my 40 gallon quarantine tank uses a simple hang on the back power filter that basically sucks water up, goes through a simple sponge, and then it goes back into the tank. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'm going in circles, going in circles. I should get away from here. There's a better place for me, better place for me. Trying to play my symphony But there's so much noise around So much noise around Constantly fighting for space I need to clear my mind Need to clear my mind Finally, we're moving on to stands. A big question is, do you need a pre-made stand? And the answer is, maybe. If you're building a tank that's 20 gallons or less, you probably don't need a stand as long as you put it on a sturdy countertop or a really well-made desk. I don't personally recommend building your own stand unless you're professional because as the tank grows in size, it's really heavy and a stand could break. Stands are typically made out of one of three materials. The first being solid wood, usually really beautiful. You can see the grain in the wood. The second is a composite. This is usually a really flat surface, usually in black or white, that has a really clean aesthetic. And the last is some sort of metal stand, like the aluminum APS stand we're using for the innovative marine build. A stand serves many different functions. The first is to hold the weight. It can hide your gear. It's often a place where you put your sump filtration. You can use it for storage and it's a really good place to do all of your wire management because you'll be surprised how many wires it takes to power a saltwater aquarium. Lastly, I have three tips for you relating to stands. The first is leveling. If your stand comes with these little leveling feet that are adjustable, that's great. But if they don't, I recommend using these composite shims from Amazon just to make sure it's super level. Second is a foam mat. This innovative marine Encore build comes with a self-leveling foam mat, which is great because it levels out any inconsistencies on the top of the stand. But if your stand doesn't come with that, you can just buy this cheap yoga mat from Amazon, cut it to fit, and then put it on the top of your stand before you put your aquarium on. The third and final tip is using silicone to seal the interior of your stand. This might be a little overkill, but I always like to do it because you'll come to find out that no matter how hard you try, you're going to spill salt water. And nothing breaks a wooden stand over time than salt water creeping into the little nooks and crannies. So just pick up a white, a clear, or a black silicone, depending on your preference, and just seal all the interior edges so when you do spill water, it doesn't cause any problems. A lot of you might be wondering why we chose the innovative marine Encore as our build. You might be thinking, wow, two tanks, isn't that twice as hard? I don't think so. You could literally just focus one tank on the saltwater side, and the second tank, you could just pop a beta fish in and make it some simple freshwater tank. The reason we chose the I Am Encore build is because it really gives you so many options, and if you pair it with that APS stand, it's just a really good centerpiece for your home while you're kind of learning and knowledge in the hobby. Innovative Marine is a well-respected brand, and that low iron glass throughout really ups the clarity, which I think you'll notice. Really, for any beginner tank, I always recommend an all-in-one system, just because there's less to think about. You know that the filtration's there. You know that the pump's gonna be right. All you really need to add in addition is some live rock, and then just choose some lights to put on it. 
It's also a small size, which makes it easy to put in any apartment or any home. And you can even put it on a countertop because you don't really need the stand for this build. The last reason is the IM Encore build is super budget friendly. For under $300, you get two low iron 10 gallon cubes that you can do so much with. Coming up next week, everything you need to know about aquascaping, live rock, and sand. Do us a favor, go ahead and hit the like button down below, subscribe. If you're watching this at Marine Depot, go to My First Fish Tank and subscribe. And if you're at My First Fish Tank, go to Marine Depot. As always, everybody, have a great week. We'll see you next week. Happy reefing.